and welcome to Honda CV200 video. Um, this is a, a, an update on progress for the speedometer uh, restoration. So we've stripped down, so we've got the, the body, uh, we've then got the backing plate dial face. Um, I then discovered a, um, um, a gasket which goes uh, inside at the bottom of the, of the backing plate. Um, we've then got all the bits, so needle and screws. Uh, this is the deflector that goes inside uh, the base plate to direct the um, the light that goes in there. But the other part that I've got here, or not got here, is the actual dials, and, and that's outside in um, what is limited sunlight. Let's go have a look. <clears throat> so I've got the part out here in this in this tub of liquid, and um, I'll, I'll try and explain what's going on here. So these are submerged in uh, hydrogen peroxide. Um, now hydrogen peroxide, there we are, hydrogen peroxide, it's not a full on 12% because this has been diluted a little bit with distilled water. Um, hi, I use this technique for re-whitening plastic, um, particularly when I've been restoring um, Star Wars, uh, the old Star Wars ships, you know, the white plastic that they were made of. Um, so you submerge that plastic in hydrogen peroxide in direct sunlight and um, it brings it back to its its original sort of whitish creamish colour um, rather than sort of the yellowish colour that they generally tend to go. So I'm giving this a go to see if um, the uh, hydrogen peroxide will in fact re-whiten the um, decimal figure on the on the dials um, as well as um, the, the actual letters on there as well. Um, but I normally do it in the middle of summer, um, that process, um, uh, with some direct sunlight. So I don't know how well this is going to work. Um, I'm also this hydrogen peroxide is quite old so you know it might not even be stable anymore so we shall see but I can't see any detrimental effect on um, the main body um, at the moment keeping an eye on it but I also can't see the bubbles starting to form on the white bits so I don't know whether that will actually work um, I may just have to live with its slightly yellowish colour. Um, other progress, so the backing plate, the base plate, um, I've cleaned off um, and we've got quite a bit of rust on here. So I'm going to go put this through some um, some deoxy uh, to remove the rust and then probably going to give it a go painting it with some of that uh, zinc paint. Um, but the one thing I am asking uh, you for some, maybe some help on, um, and that is how to reattach this, this piece. So this uh, fits around here. Uh, like so. I think it goes on that way. Yeah, I think it goes on that way. Um, and when I was cleaning it, the way it was joined on was sort of a, a rubbery kind of glue um, that was uh, just around the bottom here. Um, obviously, they sort of put a rim around that and then just like push that on. Um, and uh, I'm not quite sure what glue that was. So if you've got any ideas on a sort of a, a rubbery it was almost like a bathroom sealant kind of silicon um, material etc rubbery glue uh, for going on there i'd love to hear see your comments below on suggestions um, and then i'm gonna uh, spray it uh, paint it um, possibly a zinc um, paint on that other stuff i've got to do so this is the dial uh, so it's on a sheet of aluminium, a thin sheet of aluminium uh, or aluminium, um, and I gave it a quick wipe, but unfortunately the, the green paint has in fact um, bled over into the white lettering a bit. Um, the, it's particularly noticeable over here on the, on the 30. Um, so I need to go over this and try and remove some of this greening on the white lettering, um, but I'm also I'm going to scan this at high resolution um, and send it to a couple of um, dial restorers uh, and see whether anybody um, does uh, or can do um, the replacement dials for the CV200 range. Um, I've not seen any so far, um, not in miles per hour anyway. Um, so I shall I shall look out for that. So if you've got any ideas on where to get replacement faces for the CV200. 
um, then again uh, links and, and suggestions below um, gave the the fascia um, the dial a bit of a clean um, the scratch is looking a bit reduced and how well how well it is to make out the scratch when it's clear uh, you can just see it there on the red part of the finger uh, and I'm going to give that another go to get rid of rid of that um, so yeah so I'm going to whack this some um, stuff in some deoxy uh, to remove uh, the rust uh, on that so um, I'll follow progress with that um, and I shall scan the dial face and I'll also scan um, the uh, gasket which I'll make a pattern for the for the for the uh, for the gasket so I'm going to use some of this uh, built hamber uh, deoxy um, rust remover um, I'll put a tab in here for previous videos covering this stuff. If you've not seen or used this stuff, I really recommend this. Um, it really, <laughs> I wish I'd found it a lot earlier. So it's a, a, a powdered uh, material, and you just basically, there is instructions on how much to add um, to your to your liquid. Um, but with the test we ran, um, I sort of give a good sprinkle these days now. Um, you know, if you need it to be done quickly, whack a lot of load in if you're not too worried then. So just whack it in. I'll give that a stir with a stirry stick of some sort. So this is hot water, um, just as a, as a note. Um, so yeah. Dissolve that in there. So it's sort of a white water and then goes to generally quite clear and then just take the part. So I'm going to put the part in that way as hopefully that will reduce air traps and that part in. Um, I think that's going to be it really. Just looking around now to see if I've got anything else that's rusty because that's not a lot well there's the other the other base plate off the tachometer and it, you know it would make sense I suppose really to sort of do them all, all together but I'd rather tackle one at a time and learn from this one um, than uh, do them both and bugger them both up so we'll focus on this one Anyway, I'll, I'll leave that in there for, I don't know, 24, 48 hours, let it de-rust, then we'll dry it off, um, and then I'll use some of the, the built hamber um, sort of sink spray coating probably on it. Um, probably after I've joined that uh, that piece on for the um, for the light shadow. But this stuff is very cool. Um, I would put the camera over top, but it will just seam up, but straight away I can see uh, the bubbles forming on the metal as it starts to to dig into uh, into that corrosion and remove uh, the corrosion off the metal so that's de-rusting in there the clock faces uh lock clock mechanism is out in the hydrogen peroxide uh, hopefully whitening or bleaching um so i'm gonna f scan this um yeah i'm gonna scan this and um bring it into an art package and see if i can re whiten this i'll scan it with a, a ruler so we've got a scale with it um, i'll also scan um, the gasket as well and yeah I'll, I'll pop back with some progress a bit later right so there we are um, i've got the main unit all back together again all cleaned and lubricated um, i think one thing i've, I've learned from this is that um, hydrogen peroxide white spirit uh, lubricant water um, and these uh, numberings particularly on the white start to run so if you're if you're doing any of this kind of thing then, then really try to, to not get the numbering and the lettering at all at all wet um, with anything um, but I managed to get it all back together again um, appears to be working all lubricated de-rusted where I can not sure what I can do reference the um, the gasket here the 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 grommet rather 
it's quite badly perished but I can't get this shaft off at all uh, on the um, uh, for the the trip clock um, so um, yeah we'll see what we can do with that I have managed to clear up the face a little bit so uh, I had given it a wipe um, which had made the the green um, which is the original color rather than the blue um, had actually gone into the white letters the white numbers and so they were sort of a, a whitey green but I managed to clean those off to a point where I can live with that uh, I've cleaned the needle uh, and all that kind of stuff. I'm going to get some red fluorescent paint for the end of the, the needle for that and give that a dip. And the um, base unit, let's get the tweezers. The base unit is in here, um, de-rusting. Cleaned it up quite well. Um, got rid of most of the rust, a couple of deep bits of rust though, just at the bottom here that uh, I'm just giving it another another bit. I'll leave that in overnight to uh, continue its de-rusting process uh, and then I can paint that. Um, I've given the housing a bit more of a buff um, so I'm happy with that. The backing plate, so that's up here, that's all, uh, get some light on that. So that has been uh, de-rusted, um, so that's all now looking very nice and shiny. Um, and clean again um, we're then going to use some of this um, uh, built hamber uh, electrox uh, which is a zinc um, a zinc paint a zinc wrench paint so we're gonna um, spray it with that so I've, uh, I've got this all masked up and wired up ready to, to paint so I'm going to paint it with this Electrox uh, anti-corrosion zinc rich paint um, so I'll, I've got to do this outside so I'll do this outside hang up to dry it then says to uh, recoat apply a second coat after two hours but before three hours um, so I'll do that and I'll, I'll show you the results at the end of it so yeah back in a bit And when it's dried, it dries to this slightly sort of matte finish. It does talk about leaving it 96 hours uh, before you consider giving it um, any other kind of coating. Um, so this one I'm going to leave for another couple of days. Uh, uh, do think about uh, subscribing and following along. Please thumbs up and hit the bell notifications. Pop your comments below. I do read them. Um, and yeah, cheers for watching. Thanks for now. Bye.